All right, so we're going to do something now that some of you are pretty well familiar with, and that is doing Punnett squares. Okay, and a Punnett square is a tool that geneticists use to determine the outcome of a cross. So this is how we determine the probability of certain genotypes or certain phenotypes coming up in offspring. And the first type of cross we're going to do is the one you did in middle school, the monohybrid cross. Okay, monohybrid cross is where you are crossing to determine the, the inheritance of a single gene, and we're going to use a, an example from Gregor Mendel. So here is our genetics problem right here, and we're going to use the information in this problem to solve it. So in Mendel's pea plants, tall is dominant to short. In his first cross, Mendel crossed a true breeding tall plant with a true breeding short plant. Predict the genotypes and phenotypes of the offspring from this cross. So this is typical of a genetics problem. They're all worded like this. The first thing you have to do is determine the alleles, and you're looking for clues in the problem. In this case, it comes right out and tells you that tall is dominant. So if tall is dominant, we're going to call tall big T, right? That's the rule. You use the uppercase letter for, for the dominant. Short is recessive then, which means we're going to use little t for short. Okay, so that's step one. First thing you got to do is figure out your genotypes excuse me, your alleles. Second thing is to determine the parent genotypes, okay? So the clue here is that you've got a true breeding tall plant. True breeding tall is big T, big T, and then you have a true breeding short plant. Well, that's going to be little t, little t, right? So this is our cross. Um, big T, big T, crossed with little t, little t, and that's all from the problem. Once you've got this, you're in the clear. We're getting closer to setting up our Punnett square, but this has to be determined first before you do anything else. All right, next thing to do is to take our parent genotypes like this, big T, big T, and it's crossed with little t, little t, and recognize the fact that during meiosis, these T's are going to split from one another. So if this is the female parent, she's got an egg with a big T and an egg with a little T. Um, these are going to split as well, and again, we know because of meiosis. Gregor Mendel didn't know that, but we know that during meiosis, those little T's are going to separate. That's the law of segregation, right? So what you do next is build the square and fill it in. And I've got um, an example of a Punnett square here, and I've got the eggs on top. We're going to use the big T's for the eggs. And I've got the sperm over here on the side, just to remind you that what you're filling in in these spaces on the sides and top of the Punnett square are the gametes. Okay, that's the gametes. So you're filling out what, what genes are in the gametes here. All right. So the first is to put the mom's gametes up on top because that's where the eggs are. And we won't always draw the eggs in, uh, and we won't always draw the sperm in. But there's our eggs. They have big T's in them. Here comes our sperm with the little T's, right? And again, meiosis separated these into different gametes. Then what you've got to do is part step B is to fill in the Punnett square by putting each parent's letter in the box. So to do that, you're going to take this big T and you're going to drop it into every box underneath. Same with this big T. Drop it into every box underneath. So it's going to look like this. Big T, big T. This one's going to have a big T. That one's going to have a big T. Okay. You're going to do the same thing with the sperm, except instead of dropping it down, you're going to carry it all the way across. Okay, so you're going to carry this sperm all the way across, and this is what that's going to look like. So hopefully this sounds familiar from middle school. If not, you, you know, it, you, then you're learning it, but if, it's, if it is familiar, at least this will be a nice review for you. All right, now we filled out our Punnett square, but the last thing you have to do is analyze the information and address the question. And if you'll remember, the question says to predict the genotypes and phenotypes of the offspring from the cross. 
the offspring are these guys in here. Okay, so these are the possible offspring that you're going to get from this cross. If this egg and this sperm came together, they would make a baby that looks like this, okay, that genotype. Now, in this case, all of the babies have the same genotype, right? They're all big T, little t, or heterozygous, right? And they also all have the same phenotype. And remember, when you have a big T and a little t, when you're heterozygous, you appear to look like your, your phenotype is whatever the dominant allele is, and in this case, it is tall. And that answers the question, and that's how you fill out Punnett squares. So we just kind of took that step by step. Those are the steps that you have to take. All right, so that's Mendel's first step. That's the first thing that he did. The second thing that he did, and bear in mind this was plants, okay, so he took those F1 plants and he crossed them. So yes, that's siblings, that's inbreeding, but we're doing this with plants. So he crossed two heterozygous tall plants. He took those babies and crossed them. So we're still doing the same kind of problem here, right? You're still using big T for tall and little t for short. Now again, our parent genotypes, that's step two, right, to fit, determine the parent genotypes, our parent genotypes, these are heterozygous, right? So step two is to fill that in. Step three is to recognize that during meiosis, these T's are going to separate from one another, right? And then step four is to put this on a Punnett square, and I'm going to do this over here where there's some room. So for step four, one parent goes on top, the other parent is going to go along the side of our Punnett square. Just like that. Okay. Now again, we're going to take our big T here and we're going to drop it down into each box underneath it. We're going to take our little t here and we're going to drop it down into each box underneath it. This big t gets carried across. And you'll notice that the convention is to always write the dominant letter first. So um, on these boxes, on this box right here, for example, I wrote the little t over here knowing that we'd have a big t to put in front of it. So typically you write the dominant first. This little t gets carried across like this. And though that's our Punnett square. Now, the genotypic ratio of the F1, okay, is going to be big T, big T, the homozygous dominant, to the heterozygous, big T, little t, to the homozygous recessive, right? And that's our ratio. Well, if you look on the square, you have one homozygous dominant individual. That's one, okay? Also, if you're looking on the square, you've got two that are heterozygous. And then the last one is our homozygous recessive. So you get this 1 to 2 to 1 genotypic ratio, and there's a star by this on your note sheet. Okay. The phenotypic ratio is the ratio of tall to short. Oops. Okay, well, of these plants that you see here, okay, we've counted, or the ones that are up here, the ones that are tall are the ones that have the dominant allele in them, right? Big T, big T, or big T, little t. There is a total of three that are tall, and only one that's a short plant. And again, we're going to put stars by this. And the reason for the stars is I mentioned earlier um, when we did the genetics intro that um, certain ratios always reoccur, and this is, this is one of those times where you see that ratio coming up. Whenever you cross two heterozygous plants, no matter what the trait is, if they're both heterozygous, you're going to get a 1 to 2 to 1 pheno or genotypic ratio and a 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio. So these are recurring ratios that, that happen, and this is exactly what Gregor Mendel got. So that's two examples of monohybrid cross. You're going to do some more practice.